All right. <laughs> Let's talk about the age old dilemma of going into software development uh, while in college or going into competitive coding, because these are two very separate uh, fields. Okay. And someone who is coming in, uh, they just look at the placements and they're like, I need to learn competitive coding and they just get into this field and they're already always just doing C++ and Java and they're on these hacker rank and other competitive coding sites. Uh, while it's also beneficial for you to uh, pursue software development, right? What is your uh, thinking on this topic? Well, I would say the whole industry is wrong about this thing. Now, this is a big statement, so let me just back it up real quick. Yeah. I'm not very sure how many of your audience is active on LinkedIn, but I think yesterday there was a sort of a controversial post from an all-in calls founder where yeah, he, yeah, just, yeah. he just mentioned- Aman Royal, right? Yeah. He mentioned some of the people he got uh, from, uh, I don't remember the site, but they were the- Scale Academy. Scale Academy, exactly. So, these bunch of folks were hired on the basis of their competitive skills. And then uh, when the founder found that, you know, you are not able to do practical development from the day one, he just fired them and it sort of created all that thing. Yeah. So just to, to bring it to the context, what I wanted to say is that, trust me, 99% of the times in your work, you're not going to work with what you're learning in competitive coding. Why? Because the things which you're learning are solved. And uh, one of the most important uh, pillars in pro computer science programming is you do not reinvent the wheel. This is like, okay. uh, you know, people try to create projects which are, now this is fine in terms of projects, it's fine. But, you know, if you have dedicated your whole life on recreating TCP, for example, yeah. that is just not going to work because people have been using TCP for the last 40 years, TCP as a protocol. And if you are somehow able to come up with a magical implementation, first of all, you cannot come up with that at the, at the first go, defeating 40 years of human work. Sure. Secondly, these algorithms and things, they are fine, but they are just required in the 0.1% of cases. And uh, when you are hired as a fresher, you are not going to be working directly on the core algorithms of a company. Do not expect that if you are hired by Google, you will be working on their search engine ranking algorithms from day one. That is not going to happen. No matter how much good you are, that work would only be done by senior developers, not by a fresher or an intern. Yeah, You're going to probably be working with a, I don't know, let's say a Chrome extension team for working on the front end or a back end of their, their servers. So, uh, but again, a big but here is that you have to realize that the industry is flawed in the way that competitive coding is something which is put on pedestal right now. So companies do not really have a lot of choice. I don't know why that is the case, to be honest, in terms of selecting people on real world knowledge. But uh, yeah, they just resort to uh, seeing your code chef stars or you know how good you are as a competitive coder, how you, good you can solve problem as a sort of an entrance test for the company. But trust me, if you're good enough in the other part of the spectrum as well, that is, if you're good enough with real world development, with web development, ML, AI, mobile development, you do not need these companies. You do not need the FANG. This, this concept of being super attached to FANG companies is, is sort of which I do not really understand. Even if you want to go behind money, you can apply for startups which are well funded for example if you are if you are a web developer like let me just give you a quick scheme of getting more salary than a google engineer if you are a web developer and you want to make more money than a freshly hired uh, engineer from let's say i don't know bits or uh, any other reputed college and you are really good developer look for startups which are recently funded four or five million dollar rounds which have raised that approach the founders on linkedin tell them how much value you can bring them uh, to the table tell much tell them how much experience you have and uh, yeah i mean a fast growing startup does not need a person who can just mug up some algorithms a fast growing yeah. startup really needs people who can put practical things from day one so mm -hmm. yeah approach these people who are building real companies who are building real fast growing startups and uh, you will have your way in the in the whole machine so 
go for that. I mean, again, it's just that the industry's sort of standard is to put competitive on the pedestal and make all the hires on that. But I'm just saying that if you are somebody who wants to break the wheel, it is very much possible. It's not impossible. It is slightly hard. It, I won't say it, it is very easy. It is slightly hard, but it is possible. So if you want to make a difference, if you want to stand apart from the crowd, this is something which is definitely possible. I hope this opened a lot of people's eyes. Uh, a lot of you guys are just entering college and you were already thinking about getting placed. <laughs> and here we are just talking about something totally counterintuitive. <laughs> <laughs>